stop. Today we actually take a break from all the shredding and do something a bit different. You guys and girls voted for the topic of music theory on the lesson wishlist on Patreon for this month. So this is the perfect opportunity to talk about the five most important theory skills you should master that will change your playing forever. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into those five really interesting topics right away. Before we continue, I have some very shocking news. 70% of you guys and girls that are watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel yet. That means you keep missing a lot of very important stuff and cool weekly guitar content, so make sure to subscribe right now to stay updated. That way you can finally officially join this guitar community that is dedicated to progress and getting better every single day. So as a guitar player, what could be the first skill you have to work on before you can even get into music theory? It's learning all the notes on the fretboard. And I know this seems like a really tedious task, but let me quickly inform you why this is so important. First of all, you will never really be able to communicate with other musicians and other instrumentalists because you can't always refer to the notes you're playing like I'm playing on the fourth fret on the third string. A piano or a saxophone player won't really understand what you're talking about. And aside from that basic concept of communication, it's also necessary to visualize the notes on the fretboard and to be able to locate them quickly for anything else you plan to do with music theory. So here's the exercise I recommend to start out with when it comes to note location. It's called the octave triangle. As you could see with this exercise we're taking advantage of the octave interval and the way it is spread out over the different strings resembles a triangle, hence the name octave triangle. So in the beginning you could just learn the notes on the low E string, for example just the white keys. So that would be E, the open low E string, F, G, A, B, C, D. And then first grade news is that all the rest of the notes are repeated in the next octave starting from the 12th fret and then you can just fill in the notes in between for example the note between f and g could either be f raise the semitone so f sharp or g lower the semitone so g flat and then after you're able to visualize the notes on one string you could start working with the octave triangle exercise that i showed you in this video as you could see with the second repetition i wasn't just playing single notes anymore i was playing fragments of the a minor scale so i can also use this knowledge and moving shapes in octaves with scale fragments or with arpeggios so that is really really useful for the future so if you're not comfortable yet with finding all the notes across the fretboard, I'd recommend to do that for 5 to 10 minutes every day before you start your practice session. Just start out with a couple of note location exercises and then you can move to the second topic. This one is called chord construction and that refers to understanding how chords are actually built. Because in the beginning we are usually just studying chord shapes with chord diagrams, just learning where to put our fingers and memorizing that, but we don't really think about the notes we are playing in the chord and about their harmonic function and relation. That system of learning makes things extremely hard if you just memorize where to put your fingers and how the shape looks like. You will only make significant progress with learning and really understanding complex and unique sounding chord shapes by analyzing the relation that the notes are in. So in the beginning, instead of just memorizing where to put your fingers with those basic major and minor shapes we all start out with, I would suggest to locate and name the notes you're actually playing with those chords and to study the intervals that you're playing. For example, a super basic major chord like C major right here consists of the root, major third and perfect fifth, and C minor would consist of the root, minor third and perfect fifth. So by just comparing the basic structure of major and minor chords that way, I realized that I only have to change one note with those voicings. When I change the major third in the major chord to a minor third, I get a minor chord. So one fundamental exercise that really helps with understanding how chords are constructed is playing all the intervals and naming them. So when you are playing the following exercise, I also want you to memorize the name of each interval and also the sound of each interval. So 
So studying and learning all the intervals is a great first step for chord construction. After that you can start learning the major and minor triads. So we are not just working with two notes anymore. For those major triads we are playing the root, major third and perfect fifth. And for the minor triads the root, minor third and perfect fifth. So just like with the major and minor chords. The following exercise is really great for understanding and learning those minor and major triad shapes and understanding their connection. So if you want to work on this following triad exercise, I really want you to think about the notes that you're playing and where the root, third and fifth are located with every single inversion. And then after working on these triads for a while you can move to seventh chords, then you can move to chord extensions and so on. This is a really complex topic so make sure to take it slow and start out with the intervals. That's my personal suggestion. Alright, let's move to step number three before we get lost in chord theory. This one is called composing in a key. So this is a skill that surprisingly a lot of rock and metal guitar players don't really have since they are used to stacking riffs together and not really thinking about composing in a certain key. And for me that always kind of stood in the way of fully understanding music theory, of writing interesting and melodic guitar solos over my riffs since I had no idea what kind of notes I was playing. I was just playing random notes and then I couldn't really find a melody or a guitar solo over that so that was really frustrating for me. And then as soon as I understood basic cadences and what kind of key I'm actually playing and composing in, things got uh, much much easier. So if you want to get started working on that, my personal suggestion would be just writing down the natural major scale for example. Let's pick C major. Maybe you're familiar with the notes of this very popular scale already. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, up to C, the octave once again. So now if I want to know which chords I have available to work with in the key of C major, I just have to stack the third and fifth to all of those notes in the scale by only using notes that I can find within the scale. A super basic way of learning to understand it in the beginning is just counting up three notes to get the third for every note in the scale and five notes to get the fifth for every note in the scale. So let's say I'd like to find out what kind of chord I have on the first scale degree in the C major scale. I would just count up three notes. So one, C, two, D, three, E. So the third for the chord on the first scale degree would be E. And then I'm counting up five notes to get the fifth for the first chord on the first scale degree. So one, C, two, D, three, E, 4, F and 5, G. So the fifth for this first chord in C major would be G and the third for this first chord in C major would be E. And since that is a major third and a perfect fifth, that would be a C major chord. So unsurprisingly, I have a C major chord on the first scale degree or on the tonic of C major. So that is a super quick and basic breakdown on how to form the chords in every key that you want to work with. Just take the scale and construct the chords on every single scale degree. That is a great exercise for you in the beginning, really writing down every single note in the scale and then adding the third and the fifth, only using the notes in the scale and then seeing what kind of chords you come up with. And of course you can consult the internet and then check if you're right or wrong. So as a homework exercise for you, I'd recommend writing down the chords in the keys of, let's say, F major and G minor. Once you do that more often and work with different cadences in those keys, you get a much better understanding of how to write, compose and how to play music in a key. Let's move to the fourth topic now. This one is called scales. Just like with chords, I was just thinking in those diagrams, boxes and shapes in the beginning and I wasn't really thinking about the notes that I was playing. I was just memorizing the root note of each scale so I can move it around in different keys. But I was just seeing the dots on the fretboard, so to say, like in those scale diagrams and I was not seeing the notes that I was playing. And the biggest problem with that is that I was just mechanically learning all those scales, like the modes for example, 
the B Locrian scale, the G Mixolydian scale, the E Phrygian scale and so on. But once again I had no idea how to actually use that sound and where the characteristic notes are actually located in that scale that make this sound so special. So the way I personally recommend learning about scales is once again visualizing the notes and the intervals that you are playing. For example just starting out with the natural major and minor scale. And the great thing is that for a lot of different scales, much more exotic sounding scales, you just have to change minor details in the natural major or minor scale to get there. So that was my biggest misconception when it comes to scales. I thought you have to learn millions of scales, you have to learn a new scale every single day in order to play all those interesting sounds. But the truth is, once you master the natural major and minor scale all across the neck and you can really visualize the notes, you just have to change minor details in those two reference scales, so to say, to get more interesting sounds. So to get started with the topic of scales, here are a couple of really cool shred guitar scales that I want you to learn. And the fifth topic that is really important, at least in my opinion, is ear training. By actively training your ears to be able to hear cadences or intervals correctly, you will save so much time when you try to figure out riffs, when you're transcribing riffs or, or solos for example, because you're able to hear those intervals and those notes and cadences in your head already. So when you quickly have to learn material for a studio job, for a live job, for a transcription job, whatever you might be up to, you really, really benefit from at least being able to identify basic intervals or cadences. A great way of getting started with that is once again practicing the intervals we looked at before, since you will come across them a lot in rock and metal guitar riffs, for example, so it will be really easy to identify them after a while. And there are also a couple of really cool ear training apps that you can download or ear training programs for your computer. With those apps you are challenged to name the intervals when both notes are played at the same time or also separately in both directions. And you will also have to identify the most important cadences you will come across quite often. 5 to 1 for example or 2 5 1, the most popular jazz cadence and so on. And once you get better with that you really feel like you understand all those different building blocks that at least popular music is made of and it will become extremely easy for you to learn different material quickly without always looking for tabs on the internet. Other topics that can be really important and that you should study as well are sight reading as much as it hurts, but you might end up needing it if you want to do this professionally and I can at least recommend tabbing uh, the stuff that you're writing in Guitar Pro for example, just to get a feeling for the rhythmic notation at least. Chord substitution can also be very important or analyzing the cadences in jazz standards, identifying modal interchanges and other tricks like that. So it never gets boring and you're never done with all of that stuff. But for now I think this serves as a great overview on where to get started and what you could work on right now. You can also find more lessons, more exercises, more video play-alongs, more tabs and more guitar profiles on all of that on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Bernd. Over there you can already find over 100 lessons on guitar technique and theory and I keep adding at least one lesson every single week. So if you still feel kind of lost with all of those topics or if you just want to improve one of these um, very special topics right now, make sure to check out the individual lessons I recorded on these topics already. 
already. So in the end, make sure to subscribe to never miss another video like that again and to leave a like in case you enjoyed it or learned something new. And of course, a comment in case you have any questions for me. If you want to support the channel and the creation of more videos like that, you can also check out the merch on Teespring. As always, I left the link in the description. Thanks a lot to every single shredder who already ordered some merch. That really, really means a lot to me. I will hopefully see you guys and girls in the next video. All the best and have a lot of fun practicing your theory skills. Until then.